I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will discuss how to represent vectors. So as you know vectors have two important things to look into and these are one we say magnitude and the other one is direction. So these are the two important things about vector to represent a vector we should know its magnitude and direction. Now first let me just take up how to write a vector. You can write a vector by a bold letter. Let's say this is a bold letter. This is vector A for me. Bold letter you could write with A on a bar. You could write this vector as kind of like this. So different ways of writing vectors are kind of like this. right? And uh, direction. How do you give direction of a vector? To give the direction of the vector, let's take uh, two different cases. We'll have, we are defining a vector sometimes in x, y plane, and sometimes we are defining it in R3. So that could be two ways to represent, right? Depending on the type of vector you're working with, you could have uh, one in x, y plane, or the other one in R3. Now, let me consider one in x, y plane, mainly, so let me write down what vector A we want to represent here. So let's say vector A is equals to uh, <coughs> 2 comma 3. Let's say we have vector A which is 2 comma 3. So how do you represent this? 2 comma 3 really means that along the x-axis you got 2 units, 1, 2. And along the y-axis you got 3 units, 1, 2, 3. And so that becomes your vector from the origin. So that becomes your vector 2 comma 3. So this is your vector in x, y plane. Right? Now, this is one way of representing the vectors also. And I could also write this vector A in the form of, uh, you know, you'll find all these notations as equals to 2, 3, right? So it could be represented as a row or as a column. Perfect. So all these things are like valid things. Let's do something more about this vector. Uh, what is the magnitude of this vector? Well, the magnitude of this vector will be a square, this square plus this square, square root. So we could write this magnitude here as what these absolute bars will say magnitude of this vector, right? So let me write like this. Will be equal to this square plus this square square root which is 2 square plus 3 square square root right so that is the magnitude now how do we get it let me connect all these things right here uh, what we have here is a vector so if I drop a line here right make a triangle this will be a right triangle so 2 is along the x-axis so this triangle represents 2 along the x-axis, 3 along the y-axis, and that's the magnitude. The arrow, this is the tail and that's the head. So graphically, let me write down here, graphically, we have a vector which has a tail and a head. So, so if I draw a vector like this, then the length gives you magnitude. So so this length gives you the magnitude and this direction, you see, from tail to head. So that becomes the direction and that is geometric representation, right? So this is geometric representation. Okay. I don't know why am I conserving the space, but let's see how it goes. So in graph, you could represent, so this is graphical representation also when I put it right there. Okay, good job. Now what is the magnitude? Magnitude is this side, right? So this length represents the magnitude as I said, and the direction is 2, 3, right? 2 and 3, perfect. How much it is? 4 plus 9, 13, right? So it is square root of 13. So that is how you represent a vector in x, y plane, right? Now you could have another vector, let me write down here b, another vector, we'll do it in R3 and see how to represent this vector, right? So let us say, this vector is uh, uh, let's say 2 and let's move 3 units here and let's say uh, 4 units up right so 2 3 4 easy right 
So how do you represent this vector in R3? So in R3, we are saying we have this x, y, z here. So this is x, this is y, this is z. Um, okay, I didn't take any minus values, but minus will be this direction for x. For y, that will be minus, z is going down. Okay, anyway. So how do we represent this? You move two units along x-axis, one, two, you come here, three along y, one, two, three, and four along z. So one, two, three, four. That's the final vector. And if you join from the origin, then O, let's say B, let's say capital B. So this vector is small b for you. So that is the position vector. We say position vector. Let's talk about it. Okay. And the magnitude in this case will be uh, magnitude of B will be equal to square root of 2 square plus 3 square plus 4 square, right? So let's say like this. So we already had 13 here plus 16, right? So so that seems to be if I had 16, 29, right? So square root of 29, perfect. So that becomes the magnitude of this vector. Well, the direction you could get uh, from here, right? Theta, direction. So in this case, direction was simple. You could say tan theta, right? Or theta equals to tan inverse of 3 over 2. 3 over 2. Well, that gives you the direction in R2. So, so that is R2 for us, okay? And this is R3. So we say R2 or R3, okay? So we found the direction there. And in this case, you can find direction with x, y, z, right? So can find direction with x, y, z. So we normally say when you're doing in R3, we call them as uh, terms as direction number, right? And we also use direction cosine. The idea is in R3 especially, uh, the component which is along the axis is the cosine component, right? So, so we have alpha, beta, and this is gamma, right? So with this x-axis, it will make alpha very difficult to show for me here. Anyway, so this is alpha for us. So the cosine component of this gives you the direction. So it's also called direction cosine, and mainly in R3, okay? So this is the direction number. So I think that gives you a fairly good idea about the vectors, right? Okay. So vectors are things which have both uh, direction and magnitude. So we could also list some things which are vectors and some things which are not vectors. Things which are not vectors are called scalars. Okay. Vectors and scalars is two groups. Basically, as you can see, for example, can you list some, right? Vector will be velocity and scalar will be speed. So that is one thing, right? And vector could be, where will mass go? So mass is, is just contained in a body and weight is acting downwards. So weight is because of the gravity, it acts downwards, it has a direction, do you see that? So the weight is a vector quantity. So similarly, you could have uh, have a lot of things. So scalars and vectors are like this, correct? Uh, for example, force will be vector and work done will be scalar. Now that's kind of tricky to explain, but just remember this is force is vector, work done is not vector. Work done doesn't have any direction. You did so much of work, right? And you're getting paid for it. Force is being applied, a body moves in a particular direction. So the direction is there in the force and therefore force is vector. So likewise, you could have a long list of scalars and vectors. Okay. Now we've been talking about these vectors. One more term which you'll get to know is unit vector. Now it is important to understand that a uh, vector could be, you know, this this particular vector 2, 3, we are representing like this. Now, whether I draw it here or there or anywhere else, but if I maintain this length and the direction is same, then it will always be same as my original vector. So, vectors are not position specific. So, important thing here is not 
position specific. So I could move them from anywhere to anywhere. If I maintain direction and magnitude, they're always the same vectors. So in this exercise, we'll find the unit vector. So what we wrote here as vector A, less space, let me write like this, 2 and 3, right? So we use sometimes columns, that's perfectly fine. And we know the magnitude of this is, is equals to square root of uh, 2 square plus 3 square. And that gave us some value, which is 13, right? Square root of 13. So the magnitude of this vector is square root of 13. Now tell me, what happens if I divide this by square root of 30? That is to say, if I divide 2 by square root 13 and 3 by square root 13, I mean, do you get my point? Then this vector will have what magnitude? Well, the magnitude of this will be 1. So dividing by the magnitude gives me a unit vector. And this unit vector we represent like this. So that becomes a unit vector. So to find a unit vector, divide by the magnitude. Is it OK? So let me write this as unit vector equals to the vector divided by the magnitude of vector. Do you get the idea? So that becomes the unit vector. Now it really helps to find out a unit vector many times in many situations. For example, if I tell you uh, that the speed of car is, let's say, 60 kilometers per hour, and it is moving in a direction, and, it's, and I give you the direction also. So let's say the direction is, is kind of, uh, let me say, uh, 3 comma 4 right so that is the direction 3 comma 4 right so it's good idea to show this in this form so can you write vector to represent the velocity so the question is find find velocity vector that is the question for you now it becomes very difficult to write the velocity vector but what you can do is if you find the unit vector it is easy why the magnitude is 60 direction is given to you so you say well the velocity vector is equals to 60 times unit vector of this oh how do you find the unit vector divide this by the magnitude so magnitude is how much well magnitude of uh, this vector the direction vector in this case is 3 square plus 4 square square root which is 5 you getting my point okay let me show you so so when I say 3 comma 4 then the magnitude is square root of 3 square plus 4 square which is 25 square root which is 5 right so what I can do here is I could divide 3 by 5 and 4 by 5 so that is a direction right and I could take 5 common dividing 60 by 5 so I write 12 and then I write 3 comma 4 so that becomes the velocity with the magnitude of 60 and the given direction isn't that interesting uh, it is but it is slightly confusing right so yes at this stage it is confusing so let's get back to this we have velocity written as 12 3 comma 4 okay so we are saying 12 times what uh, yeah 12 times 3 comma 4 is the velocity okay find the magnitude of this just to check direction is correct right 3 comma 4 is the direction perfect but magnitude should be 60 will this have 60 magnitude let's figure it out so the magnitude of this velocity is equals to 2 times then within the square root 3 square plus 4 square I mean 12 times I'm sorry 12 times that is 12 times and this you know is 5 that is indeed 60 perfect it works right so what we are seeing here is that you would actually find unit vector from the direction vector well this was the direction vector so direction vector may have its own magnitude as we had 13 right uh, square root anyway so this kind of gives you an idea of what what are vectors they have magnitude and direction what are scalars they don't have uh, the direction right so can you name some other 
distance and displacement right so where will you put distance well distance is scalar right displacement if I start from here go two kilometers north and come back distance covered will be two plus two four and the displacement will be zero because I came back from where I started so it had a direction it cancelled out anyway so vectors and scalars we understand we also understand now how to represent them on a graph so simple it could be two dimensions or three dimensions on a Cartesian plane as you have seen uh, with the help of these coordinate points two three four for example we took it means just move two along one direction three along the other and four along the next to get the position of your vector vectors are free to move around so vectors are free to move that is very important to understand whether I draw with with the tail at the origin or not but if I maintain magnitude and direction it is exactly the same vector correct so that's what vectors are so to give you an idea let me just while closing this let me make a figure here a three-dimensional figure right so let's make this three-dimensional figure here and we are saying that we have vector along this is a along this is B and okay C is right there okay and this vector here is C now can you write a vector from this point to to that point well we could as a combination of these if I have to go from here to there I will go A plus B plus C so so this vector let's say O and P will be OP will be equal to a plus B plus C right similarly if the question is to find a vector between these two points these two points how am I going to write so that's very critical let's say these two points are capital A and B then how do you go from here to there you go up which is B and then you go left which is minus A so in this case a B will be B minus A right so that is how you could represent vectors with geometry well so i've covered a lot here and i hope that helps so go through some of my videos on 6.1 and 6.2 to get further details on this topic so i have about 100 practice questions for you i hope this will help you to go through them i'm anil kumar if you like you can put some likes your suggestions are most welcome and always you're free to share and subscribe thank you and all the best.